Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today on the lamp bench, we have a very strange case. Now this fixture has some good points and some bad points, and I'm going to start off with the good points. The basket is made with steel wire, about the size of a coat hanger wire, and then they take these tiny beads, a string of them, and wrap them around every piece of the wire. And it just goes round and round from top to bottom. There might be miles of these uh, beads as far as I know. Then these little jewels here are wired in the middle. The cage hangs from this brass band, which has this little decorative motif here, and then four little faces. And you'll notice that uh, the brass band holds up the cage and the faces are held to the band with zinc plated machine screws. Same sort of thing that you'd pick up at Home Depot or any other kind of hardware store. Certainly not what you'd expect to see on any kind of vintage or antique chandelier. When we look inside, we've got a single socket and then curiously steel straps raised to the uh, brass ring. And uh, this is, again is more hardware store kind of stuff. So the question is, what on earth is this thing? This reminds me of the story of the had a car, a man who had a Dodge with a Cadillac engine in it. Somebody asked him how that happened. He said, I had a car with no engine, and I had an engine with no car, and I had to put them together so that I could get to work in the morning. Now, anyone that's been in the antique business for a while, especially antique lighting, manages to collect a lot of scrap parts, pieces, odd things like that, that they can't sell, they can't uh, give them away. But sooner or later, somebody looks at that big pile of stuff and says, well, maybe I can just put it all together, make it into something. And that's what's happened here. I have worked on lots of lamps or chandeliers with this style. And what they usually had in addition to the basket on the bottom, they have a cascade of crystal chains from the top down here. And that's obviously long gone and missing. And what they were left with was this ring. They put these straps in it, put this piece of pipe on it. Never even bothered to actually wire it up because uh, why go to that trouble? You're not going to get any more money for it. And so what I've got to do here today is make this uh, safe to use in somebody's house and also at the same time make where it will fit in someone's house. Now it's difficult to hold on a lamp pipe without damaging the threads so I invented a special tool just for that purpose. First thing I'm going to do is take care of these uh, steel screws. When it first came in, I checked, and these are actually metric, three millimeter. And uh, I'm going to change over to an imperial thread. Luckily, the hole is just about the right size for a good old American number six screw. And brass, very easy to tap. And it's kind of shiny now. We give it a little bit of time and it will patina to match the rest of it. 
And I'm doing much the same thing with the screws that hold the basket using these uh, ball headed fitter screws. Now because this is going to be mounted fairly close to the ceiling in the customer's home, the basket is going to have to come off in order to change the lights. And that creates a problem because on the original one, they had pretty much just jammed it in here nice and tight. And uh, that's going to be really difficult to do when it's way over your head. As it was, it requires a lot of force and persuasion to get the screws to go across the uh, this ring here at the top. So what I did was, now I want the basket to fit on nice and easy with a minimum of effort. And this ring here on the top doesn't really line up very well with those screws. So what I did was mark each spot where a screw was. And I made a cute little tool here out of a piece of angle iron. And with vice grips, just went around and bent it up at four places. Now, obviously, these four places are kind of unique because it's only going to line up one way. So what I've done, taken one screw, mark it with some red paint, taking one of the little bumps, marked it with red paint, which indexes them. And now the homeowner can pull the basket down to change the bulb without having to worry about damaging it or bending it. Wiring the light is actually the uh, simplest part of this whole job. It's just a matter of assembling hardware. I'm going to be using this uh, three inch socket here with a little extension to put the bulb a little closer to the middle of the basket, giving that a nice overall effect. And all the threaded connections are going to have an application of the blue thread lock because I don't want this coming loose. One of the dangers of ceiling fixtures is always somebody's going to spin it while they're trying to install it. I don't know why they do that, but it's never a good idea. Now I will give the sermon that I give in every lamp rewiring video. Mainly I do that because one time I had a camera malfunction and I had to leave that scene out. And I didn't mention it, thinking, you know, I've only got like 150 other lamp videos where I do explain how to wire the socket. But no, that's got more views than any other video and more comments. And most of them are, you didn't tell us how to wire the socket. So, first thing, screw terminals on sockets. You cannot put stranded wire underneath them. All wire sold for lamps and lighting is uh, stranded. So in order to make this stranded wire into one wire and safe to put under a screw terminal, we have to tin it, which basically means putting a drop of solder on the end of the wire. That way when we put it under the screw and tighten it down, it won't splay out and get loose and it will stay tight and make a nice good connection forever. Next up, lamp wire sold in the United States has one side is smooth, one side has ridges. One screw on the uh, socket is silver, and one silver one is more brass colored. The side with the ridges always goes under the silver screw. Put it on there clockwise so that when you tighten it down, the screw will pull the wire underneath it. And we'll do the same thing with the brass colored screw. Now this is more critical on table lamps for safety reason, but it's good to practice on every kind of socket there is. One last thing that I do is that on the other end, I'm going to take the smooth wire and I'm going to color it black. And the reason for that is the electrician who goes to install this 
he's going to get up there at the ceiling and he's going to see a black wire and a white wire. I don't want him to be confused when he gets to the chandelier and he sees two white wires. I've had that phone call many times. So, black to black, white to white, up at the ceiling, smooth to brass, and ridged to silver at the socket. Now, there's a lot of derogatory terms in the antique business for something like this piece. Rank and Lear, married, marriage piece, all kinds of stuff. But what we need to remember is that uh, this brass piece here could have easily gone to a scrapyard. Would have made somebody a little bit of money. This crystal wire cage could have been broken down with each of these little jewels sitting in a cigar box on some antique dealer's uh, table in a mall somewhere. But instead, it's going to be a light in someone's house for quite some time to come. And I think that's a pretty good thing. So, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. I would thank you for watching this video. I'd really like it if you click the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, I'll respond to all. Lighting, furniture repair, animal husbandry, it doesn't matter. I'll answer the question. So, again, thank you for watching.